Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is G. You're watching All Astrology. And we're going to talk about Chiron. Yeah, Chiron. C H I R O N. This is relevant to current events. But before we go there, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but it is important. Uh, but we first need to understand what Chiron or who Chiron is and how is Chiron showing up in our world right now, in our lives. And for you at home who are watching, if you've got your chart, find your Chiron. Because everything we're about to talk about will apply to your Chiron, okay? And I'm going to pull the visual up in a minute here. I'll show you what Chiron looks like, what the glyph looks like, the symbol, okay? Um, and then you'll find out by seeing the house placement that it's in, right? Just comment to me and say, gee, I found my Chiron and it's in this house placement, okay? And so Chiron looks like the letter K, right? Just to give you a, hint, a heads up before I throw the chart up so that we can see it. Um, Because I want to have a little talk about Chiron, right? And I would encourage you as you're listening to please add on to this information. Like I kind of see this community as a resource for the future. You know, like when we're all gone and dead, <laughs> right? When we've got babies who haven't even been born yet, who will need, who will need understanding about history, but then relating it to astrology and like how these things showed up in our world, what it looked like and how it expressed differently in people's lives. Like that will be a valuable resource for the generations to come. Absolutely. All right. Because at the end of the day, folks, we are all one, no matter how we want to slice it, dice it and spice it up and, and whatever. Uh, we're all one and we're interconnected beyond the physical, beyond our transition beyond our passing, our death, our change, right? Beyond the change called death. So Chiron, it begins with a wound, a wound from a long time ago. And many folks describe Chiron's wounds as being very painful and usually emotional, but they can apply to wounds to someone's body. It can be both. It can be both. This is important. This is important because many times we would say things like, but that never happened to me. I don't recall that, right? If it's something that happened a long time ago, like childhood even, I had a, a person's chart I was looking at and he had Chiron in his first house. And he's like, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. And we did the reading and everything. And it was like weeks later. And I mean, weeks later, maybe longer when he started messaging me back. And he was like, you know what? I've been thinking about some of the things you said. And well, there's a story attached to this, right? Anyway, Chiron in the first house. Keep this in mind, okay? He also had his Chiron in the sign of Pisces. Keep that in mind too, okay? So the stories are trying to help you to try to demonstrate, right, how this looks. Because I am not a good storyteller, and I feel like I hear these people telling me their stories and their truths, right? At least what they know to be true. And I'm like, these are wonderful bits. These are nuggets. These are the pearls. These are the things that get us through this crazy thing, right? This thing we call life. So he said, when he was an infant, his mom told him this story. And it's the only reason he knows this story, because he was in a crib, infant. He was in his crib. And he said his mom came into the room. I'm not sure if it was early morning hours or just at the wake up regular time. But she had said that she had seen something on the sheets. In her mind, as a mom, it wasn't like baby stuff. She didn't see it as baby stuff, right? It wasn't like, oh, that's that somehow got out of the pamper. Like, it wasn't like that at all. It was unrecognizable. It was like, though I think the word goop or ooze was kind of mentioned. I can't remember exactly on the story that he said. But it was just something very strange. Something very strange. 
And so he, re he remembers her sharing that with him. And he always thought, okay, <laughs> you know, you don't know when you're little, how your parents like, okay, maybe they had a few drinks the night before, maybe, you know, you just don't know. Right. Uh, and, and he was also separated from his mother from birth. So it wasn't until, um, yeah, I can't remember if this was his birth mom or, or the other mom, but either way, um, cause I might be mixing stories, but that story holds true regardless of what mother it was, right? There was an adoptive family and then there was the natural born family, but either way, that story is the same, right? And then things were confirmed to him later when he was paired back up with his, with his birth family. All right. But my point is something strange had happened in the crib. Now he does remember in the crib, at least I think he was still in the crib. He does remember he was laying in bed and he felt something grabbing at his feet, grabbing at his feet, almost as though he was being pulled on or something by his feet. But for him, it was a really freaky event because it wasn't like it was mom or dad in the room. It was something he didn't, it, it didn't feel like hands. It was almost, it was, it was in, indescribable. It was just, there was an energy that was pulling at his feet. And forgive me, my friend, you know who you are. You know whose story this is. If I mix, mixed up, you know, your words and the details that you gave. But when he told the story to me, it was like, oh my gosh. And so for him, he had been going through his mind because he saw the Chiron in his first house and he was like, what the hell could that have been? Right. But when we're really small, there's a lot of stuff we don't remember. I know another, another person, Chiron in their first house, she was like, oh yeah, shit happened to me when I was small. And I remember it. She, she had the recollection and she remembers. Right. And she happened to have, I think she had her Aries in her first house. Her Chiron was in Aries. And she was able to say, she remembers you know, like the physical trauma to the body and possibly the head, Aries, right? But did you know that when we talk about Pisces energy, you know, we always talk about it being the non-material, the non-tangible, right? Like the other side, like now you see my hand, now you don't. Where did it go? <laughs> right? Like, holy crap, your hand just disappeared. How did that happen? Because that's the Pisces realm. It's like what we can't see because it's the non-material. And our eyes function, right? The way it works, where these things work. Like, I don't know the science behind it to talk about it, but, you know, we see shapes and form and color, right? And whatever spectrum we see in, it's what we call reality because that's the spectrum we see in, right? Right. But we do know for those of us who are sensitive or those of us who have knowings and intuitions, who are empaths, right? We all have different ways. We know there's this other side or this other reality that we can't necessarily tangibly gauge, right? And so we kind of, most will say that's make believe it's made up. Okay. So Pisces can be dreamy and fantasy and sci-fi for that reason. OK, but you'll it'll be interesting to add in here. It is also prayer, meditation. It is Christ consciousness. Like these are all Pisces keywords. It's idealism. Idealism. Unity. Oneness. Kumbaya. Come to me, O Lord. Praying. Right. Understanding there is something greater and more powerful than self right? That believing, that, that faith, seeing or believing in something you don't see, faith, right? So Chiron in Pisces for him, he was asleep. Pisces. There was some sort of a wound. Something happened in the crib. We don't know exactly what. We don't know what, but he was traumatized because something grabbed his feet. So it was scary right? It's the unknown. It's what we might call the boogeyman type of thing, right? So this Chiron in Pisces, Pisces, when we talk about the physical body, yeah, it's the feet. It's the fishes, right? But it's also, I can go in this direction and I can go in that direction. And that's kind of like the sign, the symbol of Pisces. It's like going in two different directions, 
because it kind of just goes with the current, flows with the ocean waves and with the cycles, right? It just goes. But Pisces is the feet when we think of our body. So if you have very sensitive feet, you have prominent Piscean energy in your chart. Pisces is the feet. So getting back to Chiron, because that's this focus here, Chiron is about a wound to the body. And I said body because that would be more about Aries and that would be more about the first house because that was in relationship to the story. First house would be his body, more specifically because it was in the sign of Pisces, his feet. You follow? You understand now? So that that Chiron energy, it's all about a wound, some sort of trauma even. And some say it's the deepest, darkest wound you've ever had type of stuff. But we all know that Plutonian energy, right? Pluto and, and that, that history, that deep vulnerability that's hidden because it came from trauma, right? We know that there's more ways than one to have pain and discomfort and to feel, to feel those, those hurts. So what I want to do is read for you the formal, the formal definition for Chiron. And there's probably lots of different ones, but we're just going off of the software that I typically use in the Starry Night Lives, which is usually uh, Saturday, every Saturday at 9 p.m. Central Time. Just want to add that in there for anyone who's interested. Chiron, Chiron, the wounded healer. That's the part I've got to talk about, the wounded healer. Yeah, that's key. It represents our emotional and physical wounds. It reveals a part of us that is hurt, small, and vulnerable. We are encouraged to heal our wounds and then look beyond personal realm to see the suffering of others and to become teachers and healers. Teachers and healers. So this is taking a wound that you've already endured. And we know that when we have wounds physically, they leave emotional scars. And we know that many times it can take years for that stuff to process and to, to like filter through the system and then to literally be out and released and let go. So what happens is, we usually have those wounds and in that whole time, we're still holding on to them. Part of it is the recognition and the acknowledgement of what the hell happened anyway. We don't know because Chiron is typically something that's really deep. And many even talk about Chiron energy like it could have happened so long ago. It may not even have been from the current life you're living. So there might be like some soul memory stuff that you're trying to tap into. And that's why you may not recall it. And so for those of you who have that sort of a wound, and then you are in this, this, this physical body, you're present in the now, you're in your personality, you're like, yeah, I'm so-and-so, and this is who I am. This is what's important to me. This is what I love to do, right? So you have all of that. But what if you're in a lifetime where these, these experiences Come close to mimicking the history, the memory. Then it's almost like, oh my God, I'm doing this again. I'm reliving this nightmare. So it becomes even more energetically charged. It's more powerful, right? Because some of us, we feel things way deeper and we don't understand why, right? That pain. And we're just like, what is this anyway? Why is this happening, right? Can this shit end? Where is the cycle? It, you know, is the end in sight? Is the end in sight? So now we're going to look at the current chart. It's not like current, current, and it doesn't really matter because we're still going to show you the glyph for what Chiron looks like so that you can recognize it in your chart. And by the way, if you don't have your chart and you would like your chart, comment below. I will get your chart to you. Comment below if you're just curious, like, if you have your chart and you, and you don't like, you're not really sure about Chiron and how all that plays out in your world and you see it in what house it's in, but you really don't know, just ask me. We can talk about it. We can clarify it. Just comment to me below the video. And for those of you who like to run and go to my email, 
that's fine. But please comment to me first under the video, right? Like, there's a little bit of give and take here. I have people who are commenting, but then there are those who just rush to my email and it's like, I have to try to do first come first serve. Okay. So please be fair, play fair. Otherwise, if you just go ahead and go to my email and you don't get a response and you're un not understanding why G hasn't responded to you when she said she would help you in any way she, she said she could, you got to play fair, man. You got to play fair. Comment under the video. I state the way to do it. And this is just how we got to, we got to have some sense and some order, right? That's just the way it is. And if you don't like that, well, I can only help those that want to be helped. And I can only do it in the way that I can do it. Okay. So let's get this other thing up, up here and take a look. Let's get it up, up. Let's see how we can do that. So here we go. We're going to mark this baby up and I'm going to show you where Chiron is. Remember, I said it looked like a K. So maybe you've already found it, which would be great. And I'm going to use a color that doesn't exactly match it, but it kind of matches it. And look, we're right there. Chiron. That's the K. It's in green. And yes, it's Chiron and Aries, which was why, you know, you're hearing me refer to the body. Okay. I'm referring to the physical body. And so that's the same as the first house. For those of you that are learning, that is the same as the first house. What sign, or I'm sorry, what planet rules Aries? If you got the answer, comment to me below. What planet rules Aries? This is all important. It's all completely relevant, by the way, as well. Very relevant. So Chiron is in Aries currently at 1551, like this chart shows. And I did draw this chart up for a date in the past. It's for, I drew it up for April 5th. And if anybody has paid attention to what's been going on in the U.S. and its government and in a state that I have been really talking about because I'm a big fan of incredible tiny homes who are located in Tennessee. But honestly, I mean, there's been a lot of things where I've been like, oh, man, you know, oh, man, you know, like, I don't know. Because, you know, it's one thing for it to be good for me, but I, I can't, uh, yeah, like this is a bittersweet moment, you know, bittersweet. Uh, and I, and I don't want to go into all the details of that, but if anybody knows about incredible tiny homes, you probably know what I'm talking about and it being bittersweet, right? Um, but April 5th, look where Chiron was conjunct the sun. You see that the sun is at 15 degrees and 48 minutes and Chiron at 15 degrees and 51 minutes. So even the day before, even the day before that, the sun at 14, the sun moves one degree a day. So we would go 14, 13, 12, right? So we're talking like the week, the first week of April actually, right? And you know, we had that first week of April, we had a full moon. Yeah, we had that full moon. And so um, even here, looking at this, we see we're very close to, right, April 5th, the full moon, right? We just see that the moon is at 12 degrees here. And this is important because what Thursday, the very next day, if you were to go and, you know, like if you pay attention to the news and just put in what happened in Tennessee on Wednesday, the 5th or, or the 6th, April the 6th, um, you, you would know what I was talking about. And again, this is not political. This is simply to talk about current events, even though I'm doing it because for me, it's bittersweet, right? There's like a personal uh, value I have here that's a conflict, a conflict of values for me. And so it's difficult. And so I thought this is such a Chiron thing, and it is, and it's so relevant. So let's stick on Aries, Chiron being the wound, wound of my body, right? Aries, the appearance of my body, how I look, how I look a wound, Chiron, about my appearance. Aries. Now you get it, right? Sun, authority figure, someone who's of authority. Someone who is of an authority, because that's what the sun is, an authority figure. Moon would have been the public, the opposition, the sun and the moon together at opposite ends, right? 15 degrees. So we had a full moon that involved Chiron, right? Full moon that involved Chiron. And I have to point out Jupiter here. It's super important. We're going to change up my colors real quick. 
I got to tell you about Jupiter. Not that you don't know, but Jupiter is in Aries. You see that right there? Jupiter is in Aries. And it's at 20 degrees. And for anyone who is not familiar with the United States chart, their natal Chiron, their natal Chiron, meaning the United States birth chart, their natal Chiron is at 20 degrees of Aries, which means Jupiter's there, which means Jupiter is going and expanding and exaggerating the wounds over appearances. Identity. Identity. Jupiter on Chiron. United States chart. United States chart has their Chiron in their fourth house. So these are great lessons. We're using this as an example, not as a debate, not to divide, right? Not to pick and choose and pick sides. That's not why we're doing this. This is to point out the type of energies we're currently in and to talk about Chiron, the wounds, wounds about the body, wounds about the appearance of my body, wounds about the freedoms of my body, the independence of my body, my identity, literally. Okay. So if any of you out there who are, who are familiar with LGBTQ or who are familiar with anybody who has, uh, who has issues that are non-Caucasian, yellow, brown, red, whatever, black, whatever, right? Wounds that have to do with our identity, our appearance, our body. United States Chiron is in its fourth house, home, the public, family. So it goes way back because it's the fourth house. So it's history. History. Think about the United States history. Wounds of the body, identity. Think, right? There's a lot that's being said here without being said. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. So I think this is important. And this video, if you haven't seen the page for the All Astrology on YouTube, if you haven't seen my channel page, you now understand, and maybe you haven't bothered to pay attention, you know, maybe you just, maybe it kind of evaded you, but go to the channel page and, uh, and take a look at it. On the channel page, it might be a little confusing. You see the All Astrology logo because that's how the channel began. But then at that time, for myself, in my life and who I complex am, <laughs> understanding that white silence is white consent is, is one of my deep passions, right? Other than astrology, I know, like, how can I have another deep passion? I do, I do. I actually have multiple deep, deep passions, okay? And so you will see on that channel page some multicolors. And originally those multicolors are related to like, you know, it doesn't, I don't, I'm not going to say, cause it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Unity is what matters. Unity is what matters. There is no, you know, whoever you are is more important than who you are, or you count and you don't, or what you have to say is more important than what you have to say. None of that matters. Okay. I realize there's extremes and there's things all in between and there's a whole shitload of gray. I know that. <laughs> and I'm just all too familiar with it. Right. But at the same time, we have to have some basic common morals and we need to live them, to breathe them, to speak them. And I am not all holier than thou. Okay. I just understand that if I were to get cut and bleed, and if you were to get cut and bleed, we both bleed red, right? Well, even though the blood is, doesn't get that red color till it hits the oxygen or something like that. The point is we're all human. And even if we're not human, any sentient beings, we're all living beings. And that is truly a deep passion of mine, folks. And so that is why I wanted, you know, why I felt the passion about this for me to talk about it. And it's a current event. 
and it's about Chiron. It's the wounds of our appearance. Okay. And some of these wounds are so old and they go so far back and enough is enough already. Enough is enough already. No one is supreme over somebody else. Right. And so I just wanted to share that. But I also want to get back to the astrology and point out about Mercury also at this time. Mercury is very close to the node, to the north node. And this is key. This is key. Remember, Mercury is information and communication. What we're talking about, what's in the news, what's in the news. Mercury means a lot of different things, but it's sharing information. It's gobbling up information. It's reading. It's data. It's keeping track of the statistics. It's keeping track of the paperwork and the filing and even calendars and itineraries, right? It's really similar to Virgo energy as well, right? It's Mercury. It can be sales and it's speaking. It's talking. It's teaching. It's also learning. It's the scribe, right? And I'm telling you, I'm getting tired of all the... I'm just getting tired of all the stuff that's called news, but it's not. It's all commentary. It is all commentary. When do you truly get the news? You're not getting news. You're getting commentary. And that commentary is swaying people. People are not, people have just lost their thinking abilities. They have just said, I'm, I'm not going to bother. I follow this person. I like them. Therefore, what they say and do and what they're about, yeah, I'm going to line up with them. I follow them because I'm okay that I'm being influenced by someone I don't even know. By someone I don't even know. Holy shit, that's scary, isn't it? Think of Hitler. He was a marvelous orator. Like, I don't know if anybody's ever seen him speak. When you look back, it's a very strong, intense, powerful orator. And so people who may not have, you know, and, and maybe he was a bad example. Maybe I shouldn't have picked Hitler. Maybe that offends some people. Maybe some people are like, well, why would you pick Hitler of all? You know, there could have been anybody. You're right. But he was a he was a powerful, you know, orator because he just, it's just what popped in. And so we have other ones who are very powerful and that's the whole point, right? And that's how we get people who are our politicians because they can talk. They can talk. But remember, Pisces is politicians and that those are people who can act and who can perform. Now that doesn't mean that they're all bad, but we're talking about news, news. Okay. And we're talking about mercury and we're talking about how it's being used to persuade, right? We're not doing any of our own critical thinking because at the end of the day, whatever information you gather and, and whatever, you know, however it's leaning, you still, at the end of the day, have to make a decision that aligns best with who you are. Mercury, the North Node. North Node is in Taurus, values, my money, my income, banking, my love, who I love. Do I love myself, my self-worth? North Node is your future. Where are you going? What do you value? And if you know what you value, is that value going forward with you? Is it going to be a part of your future? How are you going to make sure that those values stay true and that they're held onto? What is your value? Do you value the earth? How can you value the earth yet not live in harmony with the earth? Think about that. If you value the earth. And these aren't, this isn't me pointing a finger at anybody. You know, I'm, very much on the other side of this conversation saying, you're right. Holy shit. We got to make sure we're doing things that are right for this planet. Like we're on this rock and we're all together and we got to make sure shit works, right? We got to make sure stuff works. What did our ancestors do? They honored it. They cherished it and they took care of it in a way because they followed the rule. Leave it better than how you found it. We're failing at that. And that north node with the Mercury conjunct it 
it says, you know, we need to take care of what we value and news and information being shared about that. And Mercury is going to start a retrograde soon. Matter of fact, as I'm doing this recording, Mercury has already begun in its shadow zone. It hasn't begun the retrograde yet, but it has just dipped into the shadow zone, the six degree mark. Okay. She's just dipped into it. So that means going forward, this is something we're going to, you know, these next 14 days and for the rest of May, actually, we're, I'm sorry, from April till May to the end of May, this, these themes, all of April, all the way through May, these common themes, right? Wounds of the body. Jupiter on Chiron, my identity, the color of my skin, the way I identify, the whole pronoun thing, right? And I say that in a way which is honor each individual for who they are. And Mercury, how I think, what I'm thinking about, how I talk and how I communicate. And we need to do better with the news. We need to demand that we are just given the facts and so that we can make decisions and choices for ourselves. We don't need influencers. We don't need people who are going to persuade us, who are going to persuade us to, on our choices about our values and about what's right or what's not right. And we have to question ourselves if we are following someone that we don't know, they should be encouraging you to think for yourself. It's one thing to watch that program, but they should be encouraging you, please go do your own work. Come back and let me know what you found out. They should be encouraging you to do that. Okay? And so all these things, when we talk about our values, they're all, they're, they've all been in the news. Banning books, banning education, banning history, what? The identity of our body, the identity of our people, the identity of our culture, whatever culture that is. Chiron, Jupiter, on Chiron in the United States chart. And I only say the U.S.'s chart because it's the chart I have. If you're in a different country and you've got the birth data and it's accurate and you want me to, to look at it, then do that for me. I don't have time. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have time. I know people want me to look at Russia, and I've even done that, I think, when the Ukraine war began. I looked at Ukraine and, and Zelensky. I just have people who are waiting for readings, you know. And so I have to kind of pick and choose. But. Chiron and the wounds of the body, deep wounds about something, deep wounds, vulnerabilities, very similar to Scorpio energy. And we are in a strong moment with Scorpio energy in a lot of ways because the south node is in Scorpio. Right? Mm -hmm. The north and the south node are always connected. See that? I'll draw the line. You see that? There's the north node. Same degrees, of course. They're connected. There's no escaping. Same degrees, same minutes. Four degrees, one minute. It's about to dip into three degrees. But it stays here for two months, folks, which means this degree and what we're talking about, what you're hearing me talking about right now, and this Mercury, like all this information and the fact that Mercury's going to be doing a retrograde and it's Juno too, who I'm willing to, who I'm willing to partnership with, marry even, who I'm willing to compromise for. Juno is part of this, and it's values. Those who have the same values as I do, valuing the Earth. Like these are just big, big themes and events that we're going to hear that we've been hearing about, right? And Pluto is the release. And I'm saying Pluto, even though I'm pointing at the South Node. Pluto's over here, but yes, Pluto rules Scorpio, Pluto on Mars. And if you watch the recent video of mine, you heard me talk about, you might not have heard it yet or seen it yet, but you heard me talk about a co-rulership for Aries. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it. I will 
If you haven't seen it yet, I, um, yeah, it should already be up by the time you see this. So the South Node in Scorpio is releasing those old vulnerabilities, those old wounds. So we are in a time where the, the, the universe is supporting releasing and processing of wounds and moving on. South Node in Scorpio and Chiron on the United States. Chiron in their fourth house. Wounds from the past that had to do with my identity, my appearance, my skin color, the rights and the freedoms of my body, the rights, my right to be alive, my right to, the very right for me to exist and be equal because opposite of Aries is Libra. Balance, the scales of justice. Remember, she, the scales of justice, she is blind. She has a blindfold on. She has a blindfold on. So I think that's going to wrap this up. You let me know your thoughts. You let me know if you need a chart. You let me know how I can better help you understand more about you. At the end of the day, know thyself. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.